Factories which had lost hundreds of thousands of uh, employees, uh, factories were back, Twelve, up 12,000 factories in fact in the United States of America. Is this president doing what he promised he would do in the 2016 election? Yeah, he actually is doing what he promised to do. You know, uh, jobs are being created, uh, taxes are low, we're able to spend more of our money and keep more of our money. Mm -hmm. um, Actually, he unleashed the energy sector and it's di directly impacting us. You see there's $61 billion of expansions of the plants that really right here in our backyard. As far as the numbers the president goes, you know, the, the president's a liar and he's a well-proven fibber and it's been proven over and over again. And so unless I see those numbers verified from a reliable source, I'm going to have to have some questions about it. The president promised to, uh, you know, of course, the big things like Mexico is going to pay and all that stuff, but he promised to eliminate the deficit. We now have the largest uh, budget deficit in history. We had the largest trade deficit in history. Uh, um, the, job, the growth of the expansion of the economy has not been as grand as we've seen. Uh, recently, I saw we're looking at annual growth of 2.1%, which is, you know, not that great at all. Uh, um, so, uh, the, so far as him keeping his promises, I didn't get to see what he said with the State of the Union, but whatever he said, I'd go ahead and check it very carefully. Well, before I take it with a grain of salt before I, I, I bet money on it. Well, let's look at the numbers. I mean, if you look at the, pre, the Pew Research, um, if you look at the data, unemployment is at its lowest in the recorder of 50 years, uh, especially for minorities. It stands at 5.5% for the African-American community. Unemployment stands at 3.4% 4, 3 as, as a whole. Uh -huh. So when he talks about low unemployment uh, for all Americans, especially for minorities, that is based on facts and it's based on actual numbers. Those are facts, Elliot. Right. People Seahawks. say, let's have the numbers, but they never have the numbers when we're doing it. We're running <laughs> off the top of our heads. And so it's, a, it's always just sort of a, a um, you know, touch and go thing there. But the fact is we have a large number of jobs, but we also have people struggling desperately to make ends meet. Uh, what's the good of having lots of jobs and employment opportunities if the jobs have very poor income? People are investing a ton of time for a, a low uh, wage and have to work two or three jobs in order to uh, make ends meet. The fact is we live in a country now where there's basically no major city in America where you can live and make ends meet with a single income, with a, a single person's full-time income. Of course, and so this goes back to Bernie who wants to provide free education for everyone who's making less than so much because uh, we can make no better investment in America than a generation of better uh, educated Americans. I got you. And, and so that's a great way to spend our tax dollars. So we, we, we concur. Yeah, and we're back <laughs> after this. Welcome to the all-new Crazy Cajun Restaurant in Beaumont with new staff, new entertainment, and a brand new menu. Yes, we still have the great Cajun seafood you've come to expect, but so much more. The all-new Crazy Cajun, 2310 North 11th in Beaumont. A new twist on Cajun. And we're back here on 1813. Fair warning, gentlemen, uh, when... Uh, we uh, take a look at uh, the entirety of the impeachment process. We're going to look back and see the president in history and see that the president was impeached and that summarily in just a matter of weeks he was released, he was acquitted from all of these charges. Elliot, was it a waste of time? Was it a colossal mess? No, it wasn't a waste of time, but for a long time. How? How are you saying Even this? on this very show, we talked about how the, the, uh, the complicit Senate was going to give him a pass. But the fact is, we have to stand up for the Constitution. You can't just lay down and say, whatever, let him have it. Let's look at the facts. The House impeachment, they have no facts, and they're still making up the facts. You have Adam Schiff and Jerry Nadler standing in front of the Senate and just pretty much just talking. They're, they're great storytellers. They're great orators. Elliot, they're still they're, saying, give me more evidence. Since, since we're here in court, the Constitution <laughs> says the House has the oversight over the executive branch. It doesn't say the House should ask the judicial branch if it has oversight over the executive branch. It's clear in the Constitution. And the fact of the matter is, is that the Congress has a complete oversight over the executive branch. Once again, we don't have those numbers in front of us, but it reads not that this is a checks and balance things. It says that the oversight of the executive branch belongs to the Congress and the executive branch can't dodge it just because they feel the accusations are specious. They can't dodge it just because they feel like they're being persecuted. They have to face the accusations. The perfect gift of relaxation this Valentine's Day. Relaxation for two or just treat the one you love. Relax, renew, find a new you, Tina's heavenly touch. 
For the next time you need any kind of legal assistance, think Sutton and Jacobs Law Firm, 833-1100. Personal injury, business litigation, general litigation, Sutton and Jacobs, 833-1100. 833-1100. 